In this video, we are going to learn how to derive the law of sines. The law of sines is the equation sine of angle A over side A is equal to sine of angle B over side B, which is equal to sine of angle C over side C, for a triangle labeled with A being opposite of its angle, and B being opposite of its angle, and C being opposite of its angle. Now, the way you derive the law of sines is actually we're going to look at the heights of these triangles. Now the reason why I drew two triangles is one has three acute angles while the other has one obtuse angle and two acute angles. So it's two different situations and the way you draw the height for the obtuse angle triangle is to extend w one of your sides to the vertex that sticks out and then drop your heights. So the height for both of these be as such, I'll call these H, and they are perpendicular to a, um, a uh, horizontal line. And I'm going to take it from vertex B for both triangles in particular. Now, how do we derive the law of sines? Well, we're going to use sine. And the first thing I'm going to point out is the sine of C for both of these triangles would be the same meaning I get the sine of capital C is equal to opposite, if I use this right, tri right triangle, H over A. And on the right side here with the obtuse triangle, C would be opposite this H for that right triangle over A. And then what we'll do is we'll actually look at the other angle, for example, angle A, and see that we can use these two statements to relate H and hopefully end up with a statement like this. So let's look at angle A on my left triangle. It just looks like sine of A is equal to H over C. So you're already seeing that little swapping pattern happening in here. But for angle A here, it's not part of a right triangle. So instead, I'm going to use this angle that's on the inside right here, which would be, this is a supplement, these are two angles along a horizontal. So this would be the supplement of A, so 180 degrees minus A would be that angle. So if I take that 180 degrees minus A, and I say the sine of 180 degrees minus A is equal to H over C, then I almost have the same statement on either side, but on this side, I have this 180 minus A, which seems a little strange because it's not just A, but let's look at the difference formula for sine and see if they can come out to look the same. So the difference formula for sine would be sine of alpha minus beta is equal to sine of alpha cosine of beta minus cosine of alpha sine of beta. So sine of 180 degrees minus A would be equal to sine of 180 degrees times cosine of A minus cosine of 180 degrees times sine of A. Now sine of 180 degrees is zero times cosine of A minus cosine of 180 degrees is negative one times sine of A. So what we can see here is this is zero times cosine, so that goes away. And then negative negative makes a positive sine of A. So it turns out that sine of 180 degrees minus A is actually equal to sine of A. So I can actually rewrite this statement as sine of A is equal to H over C. And the reason why I showed this for either triangle, those statements can match. Now looking at both those statements, if I were to solve for H in the sine of A equation, I would get H is equal to C times sine of A. And if I solve it for the sine of C equation, H would be equal to 
a times sine of c. And now that I have them both equal to h, I can set these e expressions equal to each other as well, giving me c sine of a is equal to a times sine of c. And if I divide each side by c and divide each side by a, I can get the statements sine of a over a is equal to sine of c over c, which is just part of the law of sines. Now, I didn't include sine of b yet, so I need to definitely show that as well. And if I can show sine of b is equal to either of these expressions, then by the transitive property, the other one would be equal as well. So to pull this one off, I'm going to draw a height from either a or c. I'm going to pick a, so I'm going to draw a height from angle a. Again, I'll make a perpendicular with the side off cross from it. Call that the um, uh, altitude of a triangle, whenever it gives you that height of it. And now if I were to now use the other two angles, sine of B and sine of C, I can see that for my acute triangle, that sine of B is equal to, again, this is the height, well, we'll call it h prime just so it doesn't match the one over here. Say so it's, di it's a different height. Sine of b will be equal to h prime over little c. And you'll see the same thing happens over here. Sine of b is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, so h prime over little c. And then I can also see that sine of c is equal to h prime over b. That's also true in the other triangle as well. C, sine of c is equal to h prime over b. And now if I solve each of these equations for h prime, I'll see that h prime is equal to c times sine of b. And h prime is equal to b times sine of c. And now that I know that h prime is equal to the easy, these expressions, this is the same height being used for both of them. So I can now set so, c sine of b equal to b sine of c. And then divide each side by c and divide each side by b. I can get the equation sine of b over little b which is the side b, is equal to sine of c over side c. And there is my other one. And although I don't have sine of a over a is equal to sine of b over b, by the transitive property, they are all equal. And that is how you derive the law of sines.